Our first guest is joining us today over an internet video connection. He's Wisconsin State Assembly member Nick Milroy, a Democrat from South Range, just outside of Superior. And it's good to see you, Representative Milroy. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thanks for having me, Julie. As I mentioned, we're recording this on Thursday afternoon, and uh, just today, Governor Evers announced that he was going to be extending the Safer at Home um, order in Wisconsin for another month. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, the governor uh, chose to extend the stay-at-home order until May 26, and in that order, he has expanded some of the um, businesses that are able to do things like curbside pickup, deliveries, mailings. So they're, we're starting to get a little bit closer to normal, but I know this is still going to be a tough pill for people to swallow. Uh, I do know that the stay at home order has been working. The projected cases in Wisconsin have not been reached because of the stay at home order. And we're very thankful for that. And we feel that listening to public health experts and trusting science is going to get us through this the quickest. Mm -hmm. Well, we're doing things a little bit differently around here with uh, all of these internet interviews. And I understand that you participated in a virtual session for the legislature this week. What was that like? It was interesting. It was the first time ever that the Wisconsin legislature met virtually. So there was some technical difficulties, but uh, we had plenty of practice. It did take longer to be able to go through all of the votes because they actually had to bring each representative up on the screen uh, and see their face and confirm their, their vote electronically. So it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And you passed legislation to battle the effects of the coronavirus um, in Wisconsin. Can you talk about how that will help Wisconsin residents and businesses? I can. It's, it's extremely important that we pass this bill. We've been working for weeks with the governor's office, with our Republican counterparts in the legislature to come up with a package for relief. And the most important parts of the package were to ensure that we're maximizing the federal dollars that are going to come to the state through the CARES Act. So we're, um, we've gotten rid of the one week waiting period for unemployment benefits, which is going to be a huge boost to people that are unemployed right now. Uh, we're covering vaccinations for people that are on senior care. We're extending prescriptions, allowing pharmacists to extend prescriptions. Uh, and we're just doing everything that we can to make sure we're, we're capturing those federal dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, do you share some of the concerns that uh, some fellow Democrats have that this uh, particular legislation did not go far enough in Wisconsin? I do. The, the most important thing that I think we need to do that we haven't done is go to an all mail-in ballot system for elections in 2020. I think this is in the best interest of public health and I think it's in the best interest of protecting our economy. When you have people congregating at polls, you increase the risk of spreading this disease and extending the economic and public health crisis that we have. So I think going to an all in all mail-in ballot system would be our in our best interest. So do you see additional legislation for that coming up soon? We actually proposed an amendment. It was voted down. There's also legislation out there. I'm hoping that the uh, Republican majority in both the Senate and the House can come together and realize that this is something that's incredibly important to protect public health uh, and that we can get it done before the next election. Mm -hmm. You'd have to expect a, quite a bit of pushback on that, though, I imagine. There is, and actually we have a special election coming up. Congressman Duffy resigned uh, several months ago, so there is a special election coming up in May. Uh, it's, it's something that should be done. I don't know that we're going to be able to get it done, but if we don't, I'm telling as many people as I can to request your absentee ballot. You don't need a reason to request one. Just request, request one mainly to try to help slow the spread of this disease and protect your family and your community. Mm -hmm. Are you finding that there is more of a, a willingness to be bipartisan given the circumstances today? 
There is. We've had a, a very contentious last 10 years in the Wisconsin legislature, as a lot of people know. Uh, we came together on this bill, and it's it's critically important in times like these that we put politics aside and that we work together to try to do what's in the best interest of not only our state, but our entire nation. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about the, the Safer at Home order that is going to be extended, and I know many folks... Uh, are very eager to reopen businesses and uh, recapture some semblance of normalcy in life. What are you hearing from your constituents? Are they getting restless? Uh, they are, especially the small business owners, and I don't blame them. People work their entire lives to build up a small business, and with a global pandemic like this, they, they see that it could potentially all go away, and I empathize with them. And we're going to do everything we can to support small businesses and get back to normal as fast as possible. But we have to trust the science. And we also have to realize that if we try to go back to normal too early and risk spreading this disease into communities that it might not be widespread, it's going to have even more long-term economic impact on people's lives. Mm -hmm. As you look in your mind's eye, what is it... Uh, uh, what does it seem to you it would look like to reopen the economy in a safe way? That's a very good question. I think the most important thing that we need to do to start opening things up is to have widespread testing and also uh, contact tracing. So we need to be able to test people that are sick and people that are found to be infected with COVID. We have to have a robust system to be able to go back and see who they've been in contact with over the past week or two to make sure those folks are quarantined also. Mm -hmm. That sounds like sure. something that might take a little longer than a month. It, it could. Uh, the Department of Health Services is working very hard and they've made great strides to increase the amount of testing and the reliability of the tests. Also the, the um, contact tracing and it's something we're gonna to have to work on. But short of a vaccine, that's our only option to go back to anything that might resemble normal. Mm -hmm. What's the shutdown doing to the, the coffers in Madison? Are you concerned at all about the lost tax revenue and what this could mean both short-term and long-term for programs and services? It's gonna have tremendous impacts on state revenues. This, Wisconsin, all states get their revenue through sales tax, income taxes, and without people working, without people spending as much money as they normally do, we know there's going to be a huge shortfall. Uh, it's it's going to take a lot of pain to get through it, and I don't look forward to those conversations in the future, but right now we need to focus on the, the health crisis and make sure we can try to get this under wraps and get back to normal as soon as possible. Now, the president has formed an advisory council to explore reopening the economy across the country. What happens if that clashes with what's happening in states like Wisconsin? Well, I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but uh, I do know that states have, have sovereignty. So I would uh, hope that the, the president and the administration recognizes the sovereignty of states and allows governors and legislatures to make decisions that they feel are in the best interest of their own state. And we have about 30 seconds. Is this going to monopolize the Wisconsin legislature for the year or do you expect other business to get done? This will monopolize the legislature for the rest of the year. Actually, anybody running for office just took out papers a couple days ago. So usually we, we are not doing much for legislation and anything coming forward will be dealing with COVID-19. All right. Well, Representative Nick Milroy of South Range, thank you for joining us. Uh, stay well, stay healthy, and good luck as you work to uh, help resolve these issues. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you.